Christina, you're working as an evangelist at uh, Red Hat, and I understand that a big part of your job is talking to people about APIs and containerized integration. Yes. Tell me some of the benefits that people need to know about. Uh, well, basically, there's two benefits the major majority of people are looking for. What the first one is agility to be able to move faster, so they can innovate faster to provide their services faster, and the other one is flexibilities, so they can actually change things around to deal with all the changes. Because nowadays, you need to change your application a lot more frequenter than what we need to be, what we need to do before. So that is why we. Uh, that's what's the benefit of how, how this whole idea of being more. Uh, distributed and with API and containerization. That sounds like it's doing a lot. Yeah. How does uh, using APIs get you those benefits? There's always a catch somewhere, right? Sure. So if you want to go flexible, you need to sacrifice something, and that's the complexity. So the more complex, um, the more flexible your system is, the more complex is your architecture is going to be. And now because of the container, my, my system is now very flexible and I can place them whatever I want to. I can, I can uh, scale them up and scale them down as I need it. But there's more management I need to do um, in terms of you know, how do I manage all the container that's running. Before I only have one or two, now I have hundreds. So is there any way that I can manage that easily? Right? So that's that and the container pillar that we have in Red Hat's Azure integration is how, how our opinionated way of how to integrate and how to manage all that container and suits the operation side of the story. And then we have the APIs. So okay. the APIs are the, uh, the contracts, right? So they're basically the contracts, but people think that it's just an endpoint that provides a way for other people to communicate with you. In, in, in some of the words, that's right, but it's not just that. You need to think about the security of your APIs. How do you secure your endpoints? You have to think about how do I provide this API to the users because they are your assets. And how do I promote my assets? How do I secure my asset? And how do I provide services? And all that is, is all bundled within APIs. So there's got to be a way for me to, first of all, easily implement my API so it's easy for me to expose whatever I have and a way for me to secure my API so that it doesn't nobody has no rights, or people that doesn't have rights uh, cannot come into my services. Mm -hmm. And then we have the people, we have a place where we can see how our assets are doing. So if it's not making us money, let's just get rid of it. And then there's also the other aspects of building an ecosystem. That's not so you're very convincing. I want to get started. I want to do this. How do you uh, help clients do it as an evangelist? Do you have a roadmap? Do you have a set of steps? Or what do I need to know? Right, so I have a HR integration reference architecture that kind of goes through the basic uh, okay. architecture of how to do HR integration. So I have a, uh, where in that reference architecture, I broke it down into three different layers. Mm -hmm. uh, the first the, the first layer is probably the most basic one where it's, it's what everybody talks about as microservices. It's uh, breaking okay. that, um, uh, your your application into small bundles and it's independent, it's small, it's easy to maintain, that's that, so that's very basic stuff. But what I'm saying here is about what's above that layer. So one of them is composite layer, it's right above the basic service layer is because you don't want your clients to connect to to connect with a thousand microservices that you're creating, sure. right? So you need to some have some kind of composition. And that's where the old that's where the integration comes in. That's where we kind of have to put things together and make it um, make it valuable for the users use, using it. So that's when the composite layer comes in. So it's all combining, aggregating, and normalizing data as you need. And it's not always um, HTTP request. Sometimes you need to have a synchronous because that's more an uh, event-driven kind of type mm -hmm. of uh, communication. So that all happens down there. And then you're going to have a place where you have to have more like a client-focused uh, services or a client-focused um, capability, right? That's where the gateway layer, so that's where the last layer of the top layer, where it, where it provides client-centric transformation of data and it provides the, uh, the routing for uh, where it's supposed to go in your, in, your, in your enterprise and all that. So it kind of does all that basic stuff for you. And on top of that, in the gateway layer, it also also deals with all the security and the management management of your API because that's how your service is going to talk to your clients. And on the very sure. bottom of that um, layer, I have a very specific layer I call anti-corruption layer. Okay. So that's when you talk about brownfield and greenfield and 
uh, or older legacy applications and your your uh, microservice application. It, the reason why we're having that anti-corruption layer is because we want to hide away all the slow moving parts and pieces um, from your HR integration uh, implementation because you don't want to wait a month for them to actually push out a, to push out a, re, uh, a function. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you.